Uh, next up, I'd like to welcome Chris Wihipehana to introduce our next keynote speaker, Anihira Moruhu. But before I do my bro, wow, wow. Um, I remember the first time I really understood how Māori encoded knowledge in the carvings, in the motietia, in the waiata, um, in the oral stories, but it is always so amazing to get an example of how that was transmitted. Whew! Thank you. Okay. I am this whare. Warm Pacific welcomes to all of you, um, whether you are in this whare or joining us on the internet. Yeah! <laughs> welcome, welcome. Um, my name is Chris Wihipehana, um, called Ngāti Tūkorehi Taku Everything, and I am here to introduce our next speaker, um, Anahira Morahu. Whew. She is a flower of Ngāpuhi, Te Rārawa, Te Aupauri, Ngāti Kahu, and Ngāti Whātua Heritage. She has a long and illustrious career in libraries with a particular focus on Māori and Indigenous issues. She has been active at regional, national and international conferences. Um, she's hosted library conferences and has been a judge on various panels. In the past, she was the Tumawaki of Te Ropu Whakahau, which is the leading national body that represents Māori in, engaged in libraries, culture knowledge, information, communication and systems technology in Aotearoa, New Zealand. She's still um, a member of the National Council. Anahira works at the University of Library... Uh, University of Libraries? <laughs> University of Auckland, Tamaki Makairo, as the kaiarahi for the Faculty of Business and Economics. And included in her biography on the website is this beautiful, beautiful line. Kamanakia ho i ngā rangatira mō apōpō, Marato e maro tiri tiri ai te ara fakamua, ka mai anga hua mo tato o ngā iwi Māori. Loosely translated, and I mean really loosely translated, it says, "I take care of the leaders for tomorrow. They are the seeds of our future, the fruit for all of us." And as an academic librarian, that is really um, inspiring to me. It really resonated with the way that I want to think about the students and the staff that I work with as well. But today, she is speaking to us as the President of the Library and Information Association of New Zealand, Aotearoa. So please, homoe te paki paki, put your hands together to welcome our next speaker, Leanza President, my President, Anihira Morehu. <laughs> after, after te kahu, I don't know whether I want to go. <laughs> um, he iwi kainga, karanga mai, ki tene uri o whatua e. Ko te rarawa te aupouri, ngā tikahu, ko te whare o ngā puhi e. He iwi kainga, karanga mai. Na ute po hiri o te rangi e, ka rangi ta miro ai ngā here o te aroha e, ka putara ki te ahau e. Nō reira e ngā rauranga tira mā, ko haka rau i ka mai i tēnei hui a tīnana a rorohiko hoki, ke o koha, tēnei te mihi atu ki a koutou katoa. Aue tau kiri e te prata. E kore e mimiti te puna kōrero i tāu mahi, kia whakaranga tira ai i a tātou, i tēnei wā, ngā mihi nunui rau atu ki a koe, ki tō mau ngā mau ao, pai rau a tēnā kōrero i hoki mahara au ki wetahi atu o taupo me wera atu o ngā kōrero o te kainga, mihi nunui rau atu ki a koe. Kia koe, Chris. Chat. I think it's a payback for Volan telling him to do other stuff, so it's, you know, <laughs> come back to bite me in the bum, but that's all right. Um, kia koutou katoa, um, tēnei te mihi ati kia koutou. After that, I was like, I was sitting there going, oh my God, I'm starting to shake. Because I'm like, I'm like, really? I've got to go after that. He just woke us all up, now I'm going to put you all to sleep. So just bear with me and try not to snore too loudly. 
um, and to all of our colleagues that are wherever you may be in the world, um, know my Hanamai and welcome to this um, little corridor. And I'll try not to be too long. I did do a video <laughs> just in case, you know, because I'm from Tamaki Makovit. Um, just in case we sort of got stuck, um, you know, got stuck there. Then I did a little video, and then when I thought, oh, yeah, I'll come and do it in person, and I was like, I think my corridor is going to be totally different to what I gave Tosca on the video, but, yeah, you know, you just got to roll with the times. Um, but in thinking about that, you know, the impact that we've had this year has been amazing, um, and it's been really good for us, I think. Um, it's been a challenge, but it's also helped us understand a few things, and, you know, being 20 years that Koha has been around, I remember the first time that I ever heard about Koha, it actually wasn't even Koha, um, Catalyst, sorry, but you know, first time I ever heard about Koha, I think it was Chris when he, um, that company in America, you all remember that? They tried to take our name and trademark it. And then of course our lovely mates um, who happened to sit on the board to to um, veto all of this stuff. We're sort of letting them get away with it until, you know, once I found out who was on there, all of us in Te Rupi Whakahau were, um, cheer, bro, um, <laughs> and thanks, Deirdre, but, you know, this is a term that we use constantly, and if they trademark it, are we not allowed to use it anymore? Like, Paul Moana can't use her name in Germany. And they were like, oh, we never thought about that, and we went, yeah, wow, well, you know, you should. You really should. Misappropriation and repatriation is still alive and well in the digital world. So from that, he got a huge, got huge support, and of course the whole country and even those internationally got on behind and donated so that we could raise money to have a big go against this American company that turned tail and ran anyway. Hopefully Trump does the same in the elections, <laughs> but we'll see, fingers crossed, and you didn't really d try and edit that bit out somewhere. <laughs> Oh, too late. <laughs> Damn, oh well, doesn't matter. Eh? <laughs> well, anyway, so um, with the whole thing that's happened around how we've actually noticed with COVID this year, you know, technology has become a really huge um, tool for us to keep business continuity, you know, whether it be on a Zooey or as we like to do on a Friday, a Zinu. <laughs> um, but, all <laughs> the, but all of those different aspects, it actually came, became really hard. I mean, I loved it. Don't get me wrong, I love working from home. It's, it just suits me down pat, because then I can sit there, you know, just turn the screen off and have a kai, or go and pick up my mukos from school and, you know, sit there and say, yep, I'm still here while I'm <laughs> out somewhere else. Um, and thank goodness they're all in meetings this morning, so they're not watching my speech, so this is going to be really good, even though I had a meeting, a Zooey, a Zooey meeting with them this morning at around about 8 o'clock. Um, but technology, you know, it made us think. It made us understand a few things, but COVID especially, huge impact. Not just for us, but upon the world. Me, personally, being at home, used to sit there and I, I'm right by the whenua, um, and going out and watching all these people who never walked their dogs before in their life. <laughs> and now walking across our whenua, and my thing was, get your poop bag. Because I can guarantee I never saw any bags anywhere, not even on the leash. And I'd be like... Look at me as if I couldn't, you know, go up to them and say, get your poop bag out. And they were like, she's not going to come up to me, you've got to keep two metres. And I'm like, you're on my whenua, my mukul's play on that whenua, get your poop bag out or go home. <laughs> Did it work? Didn't. But then my cousin who lived across the road and was taking her dog for a walk, it worked big time because she just lost it, especially when they wouldn't pick it up. But anyway, moving along... <laughs> Shouldn't really be talking about that stuff anyway at the moment, but at least we're not eating, so it's all good. Okay, so COVID. Great time to be home, spending time with family. Who would have thought that it was like, my gosh, I can actually do a work-life balance. I've got time with my family, although maybe we had a bit too much time with our family. I was able to go out and walk. You know how you have your computer doing the old... 10 minutes or, you know, do an hour, then get up and do 10 minutes exercise. You don't have to worry about that. You ate well. You ate healthy. But what it really made you think about was, am I in the right place? Am I going in the right direction? 20 years Koha has been around and now they want to look into the future. 
are we ready to help them look into the future? I hope so. As Leanza, um, as Te Rauhiringa o Aotearoa, we've had a long relationship, I think. I went on a trip last week, so in the last two weeks, three weeks, three weeks, this is the third week, I've went from far north, up in Kaitai and Kaikoi, down to the deep south, which we actually named um, from the Tangata Whenua, they actually gave us a name for the region of Otago Southland, um, which was Murihiku. So Murihiku is from the Waitaki all the way down to the Waiau River. And it's really funny because no one ever knew that. So Murihiku itself was taken and only attributed to Invercargill Regional Southland, and that was because they had a bit of a raru with the Otago District Council at the time. So they separated and went, stuff used, and the name got attributed to that. And so Tangata Whenua, Chris's, Chris's whānau from Kaitai, actually said, all the runaka down there said, well, we want to actually um, bring the name back, and we as Te Rau Hiringa, we're quite happy to start bringing those sorts of whakaaro back and doing the right thing. We've got six regions. This one was the last one to actually have g been given a Māori name. Um, and what was so great about it is it was the first time all the other regions, I have no idea how they were named, but none of them went to Tangata Whenua to ask. But we did for Murihiku, which was the first change. And I suppose that had something to do with me because it was like they'd spent 12 years trying to do it. And then it came along and then, whoo, Māori girl in presidency. <laughs> and it was like, whoo, what do we do? Oh, I know, let's email them and find out. <laughs> something different, actually, talk to them. And it was great. It was great. We had a zui. Um, probably, we had four, five out of the eight runaka turn up. Um, and then even after that, I wasn't sure whether that was the name they were giving us because it was still like there was a huge study going on. It was like, OK, um, so is it? And so I waited and I thought, oh, we go back another couple of weeks. And then I tried again. And then there was this whole thing of, who do these people think they are? We've already confirmed this. And I was like, OK, then. Sorry, I just wasn't sure because we were having a discussion and you didn't actually say, here it is. And then they sent me a letter and I was like, Phew. So we were all happy with that. Anyway, back to my actual court at all. <laughs> um, so Koha is, is, is a system, uh, for those that don't know, a content management system that is, is used by over 15,000 libraries, which is absolutely fantastic after 20 years. Um, I actually asked if Iwi used it. Um, and I know one that does, um, Ngāti Tamatera, is the only one? Are they the only one? Tamoho. Ngāti Tamoho, are they the only one? So far. So far. OK. We, we're getting ready um, in the bottom end of the, of the in, in the southern end of the Wharitapu of Ngāpui, in Ngāti Whātua, to actually start building, finally, after like 16 years, um, building our archive. Um, we've got a lot of stuff that... Raywin, who's been helping um, Ngāti Tamoho, says, oh, it's just for, um, like, a library cataloguing system. And I'm like, yeah, but can it do more? Because we went through all these other places with um, New Zealand Micrographics and looked at Recollect as an archival storage thing, and then we went through all these different phases. Um, and no, no one wanted to listen to me, because, you know, who am I? I just work in libraries. You know, what do I know? Um, but Iwi finally have considered what's going on and they've been in contact with Kaitahu of course because of their, um, the, the, the system that they're using when they built Ka, Ka Hurumanu which is Nga Hurumanu, I didn't realise that I was sitting there trying to figure out the car and going fire? Is it, is it like you know they, they've like lit a foot, no oh, that's right it's Kaitahu, they've got a different uh, variation in their language and I keep on forgetting about it but um, that system now is something that we're looking at and creating our own. And why are we doing that as we? Because we can. Why do we really want to do it? Is because then we own it. Then we can look after it. We can be kaitiaki, as you are all kaitiaki. I don't know whether you're in libraries or... But if you're in technology, you're all kaitiaki of some sort. What you actually do with that is where we come into interest. OK? We want to, we want to know what you're doing with it because... Māori themselves have concerns around the digital content. Take, for instance, the uh, Māori Land Court Minute Books, 1865 to 1910. They've been digitised since 2001. How do I know that? Because I went to a, went to a, um, a hui at Waikato University that told us that they had digitised it. Do you know that 
archives have a copy, Ministry of Justice have a copy, um, the Māori Land Courts have a copy, and Waikato University has a copy. And not one of those four have a full set. But if you combine all of them together, there's a full set. Go figure. So which one do we want to get access to? We don't really care, we just want access to ours. So we have approached the Ministry of Justice, and um, thanks to Tai oh, here's a bit of a hard case, because, you know, everyone has a sign, your first name, dot last name, at whatevergovernment.nz. Was the old, well, how did you get my personal one? It was like a um, <laughs> bit of a no-brainer, bro. But anyway, this is the one that you should be contacting me on. So we made contact with them as an iwi. Then we get asked, why do you, or who do you think you are to want access to those? And I'm like, um, we're the uri of those tūpuna that gave you the kōrero. We want it, and why do we want it? We want it because we want our kids not to be left out of the information loop. We need them to be able to stand on our marae, to stand in the places where we're going around our whenua, to open buildings and bless sites and everything else. We need them to have that information of those who have passed and we haven't got that kōrero back. So in saying that, the role that we have within information sector is how do we, how do we give appropriate access to it? And I've totally gone way off my notes, but that's all good, and I don't even know how long I've got left to talk. Um, but anyway, so I thought about um, some of the things that Whatarangi Winniata, when I was going through last night after the ABs one, <laughs> I was more excited about that than the election results, sorry. I actually pretty much sat there with my niece, and she was going, oh, this is really nail-biting, and I went, I'm going to bed, see ya. And then I wake up and says, oh, sweet, I'll just look at it on Facebook, you know, or read it in the paper and go, hmm, Labour won, hmm, do I really care? Yeah, sort of. But was I more interested in the APs? Hell yeah, Max Brewbar was awesome. Um, so when I got back last night and I reviewed my notes and I was going, yeah, OK, now what? Um, but when I thought about um, Whatarangi Winniata's corridor about how we provide information to our whanau or to anybody, any tanga that you have, whether it be virtual or whether it be in hard copy. And I'm thinking about the poor ocean, what is it, the Oceana Pacific collection that everyone's having a go at National Library about. Well, poor mate Rachel. Oh, well, hey, uh -huh. um, But, you know, when you have a look at that sort of stuff and it's like, um, how do you retrieve it? See, now people talk about provenance. I didn't know what provenance was. I actually had to look it up. But provenance... Provenance from who gifted it to them? Where did they get it from? Who did it really originally belong to? How they store it? Where do they store it? Now they want to put it digitally. Did they really ask the right questions whether it should be digital? How do they disseminate it? How do they disseminate it? How do you disseminate it? It's only easy to sit there and push a button. Should you really be disseminating it? And who has access? Pretty much everyone wants to have open access. And I, don't get me wrong. As te rau hiringa o Aotearoa, we are right into the open access for so far. When I think about the Māori Land Court Minute Books, and I had a few mates that sat on this group of 20, meant to represent all iwi, it's tapu. And I'm going, who says? And he says, oh, well, you know, you have to. And I says, yeah. And again, it's about who provides you with the kōrero. If you don't get the kōrero, we get lost and we can't come back home to say that we do have rangatiratanga on our whenua. This is our tūranga waiwai. So why aren't we providing them with access? If we ask for it, give it to us. That's our kōrero. If we want to make it open access, we will. Because I can guarantee you, unless you know how to read them, you're not going to find whakapapa in there. And you've also got to make sure that the statement behind it, or the disclaimer is, that person that was a scribe, didn't speak Māori, wrote down their opinions or how they wrote, and then again, most of us can't even read script. I've, we've got a little project at the moment, I've got five rangatahi to help us, and we're transcribing um, the Kaipara Minute Books, just to help again, because you know, we've got the lovely Maritūahi, Tainui, our own runanga, um, Ngāti Awa, and who's the other one, and there's another one trying to sit there and, and have a go at us in our settlement area. 
So when people talk about Te Tiriti or Waitangi, the Treaty of Waitangi, or Te you know, and if you want to go upstairs to have a look at the Hei Tohu, um, women's suffrage, yep, um, then it's just upstairs. But when you talk about things like that, you've actually got to realise who has that material. Who owns that material? We want that material. How do you make it accessible for us in a way that's appropriate? Okay, and technology sort of does and doesn't do it. Um, it's like, like I said, Zooey, you know? Don't record it. We definitely don't record our ones. Everyone else records them and it's like, are you recording this? And they go, yep, why? And go, okay, I won't chat to you then. So you sit there and you spend all your time texting because what people don't understand is that even while they're recording, you think you're having a private chat, but it isn't because it comes out and you're not the only one that's going to see it. The people that's recording it is. Um, okay, right. So how do we digitise the material, okay, which makes us think about what's its purpose? What is the purpose behind digitisation and all the other red tape that comes in and around it, especially when you're with local government? Um, like it says, when we made the Papatupu Block Committee Minute Books available, openly accessible, we got rung by the Ministry of Justice and said, we're just going through the whole, there's a new copyright legislation coming through um, about digital concerns. Um, they says, who said that you could make this available? And I went, well, here's your letter. You did. <laughs> and they went, oh, really? And I went... Yeah, you sent this to us like two years ago. And we put your disclaimer up on it. Farno went, this is really awesome. Other Farno went, there's stuff in there that's tapu. I says, unless you know the te reo, you're not going to understand any of it. And even if you do speak te reo, most of it's in old reo. And old reo that we don't even understand. They're using terminology that we, wouldn't, we would take for granted today and put a term that actually isn't it. And one of, one of the ones that I always bring up for our students is kohanga. So when they talk about kohanga, people think language nest. They're talking about language nest. In the north, that's not what kohanga is. Kohanga are like where our... No, let, let me not even go there. So I'll just confuse <laughs> you all and then I'll give you some hints as to how you can read them. And we don't want that because <laughs> we want that stuff for ourselves. Um, OK, so... You know, so digitising material, making it accessible for us if we ask for it. It's ours, give it to us. Don't sit there and try and put red tape in. So at the moment, um, sorry that Richard Four, you know, is leaving, uh, well, not leaving archives, but, you know, been acting and he was the one that I've been in contact with. So we're actually having a go, us and, us and archives are having a go at the Ministry of Justice to get access to our material. What does that mean? Well... Let's see how long it takes. They told us that they wanted to wait until after the election. We're like, yeah, just keep on battering, you know, battering that ram. Just keep on pushing, pushing. That's what technology is great for. Just bombard them with emails and get everyone else on board and then spread a few slanderous remarks, you know, just on the side through Twitter or anything else and anyone will pick it up because they love what? They love reading Trump. So if they love reading Trump, they're going to love reading our stuff. Um, okay, so... Anyway, now I've totally lost myself. Um, yeah, okay, right. Increasing knowledge. Oh, Leanza. I better return back to Leanza. <laughs> That's what I'm here for as president. Um, Leanza, where are we at? So Leanza's got a lot of, a few things that are going on. And of course, like I said, the relationship that we have with Catalyst and Koha is one of the many. Um, and we're, tra we're changing our governance structure. Fit for purpose. Is it fit for purpose at the moment? Maybe, but we've got a really great team um, working together on it to actually see whether we are fit for purpose for the future. What does the future look like? At the moment, we're, we're a bit of that whole the, um, ranga framework that William Doggerty talked about. You know, we're sort of in the rangatahi phase where you just got tunnel vision. You know, you only see one vision. And we need to start doing a bit more and spreading out and opening our eyes up a bit further. And you can't do that if you've just got a whole bunch of librarians sitting on there. You know? And we know that from when we had a look at um, the IFLA Willock. You know, we were trying to get the IFLA World Library of Congress here in Aotearoa. Thank goodness, you know, the um, convention centre, the so-called International Convention Centre, had a big, huge fire, yay, while we were all at conference. Um, and it was great. It was the best thing that ever happened because it made us actually realise that the governance that we had on that and the governance that we have in the end it needs to change. Do we actually have the right people sitting in the right place to be able to do the things that we're doing? And COVID brought that out. Do I really want to be in libraries? 
I do. I really like it. But I'm not. I'm at the business school. I'm the kaiara here to sit there and help them do the cultural thing. Looking after the Māori and the Pacific communities. I don't really look after the Pacific communities that much, but if I get the Māori thing right, then they'll follow along anyway, as our teina on our whenua. And that's another huge fight that we have, tuakana teina, but on our whenua, we're the tuakana. Um, but if we get it right, then the processes to help support them will come right. So everything that we do is about um, what we see in the future and what we want to achieve in the future. And our biggest one is our purpose at the business school um, is Tarai Te Waka. Now, I went home and was talking to the brother, um, Levi, and says, how does this sound? And he goes, well, what's your, what's your purpose behind that? And I says, well, it's not really a whakauru, um, but it is. I mean, if you think about it, the waka is actually the future or the journey. And as navigators, and bringing up the old kupe, um, as navigators who navigated the world, not just the Pacific, the world, um, we need to make sure that we're providing all the tools necessary for our students and for our staff so that they can leave any time they want. And at the moment, they sort of getting voluntold to leave um, because of the whole COVID and impact on financially. But we're providing them with the tools, and that's what we have to do. Tārai Te Waka is about shaping that tool, shaping and building the waka so that they can navigate and take those skill sets away with them to build a future in their career path. You know, and, and, you know, just like driving down the road, you know, you sort of sit there and you're so busy trying to reach over and grab a tissue or, you know, doing the naughty thing and someone goes text and you really want to look at it until someone touches your hand and you're like, ooh, and carry on driving. And you tippy hide all over the place because you never ever end up staying as Kiwis. You never ever stay on the straight and narrow. We're always going to tippy hide over there and go, ooh, I remember this place, this has got the best chop bombs in the world. So I'm going to ask them to go, how do we want to support them, not just as sponsors, but in navigating or changing the career pathway that supports everyone else. If you, use the, if you use their systems, does it work for you? What needs to be added, you know, all those different apps that you get? I've got so many apps on my phone and it's not even me. I've got, I've got a, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, I've got two phones. One I gave to my granddaughter and she keeps on loading apps on it. And what she doesn't realise is that when it loads up on hers, it loads up on mine, so she keeps on wondering why stuff gets deleted. And she's like, I'm sure I had that app. She doesn't know when it comes up on mine. I'm like, what's this? I play with it. Go, she can't play with that. Delete. <laughs> no? Little does she know, she'll get older. When she gets older, she'll understand, and then she'll be going, oh, how do I stop her from... Well, she can't because, you know, it's on my account. So if Nana's going to pay for it, Nana's going to delete it. Um... So, where am I at? I have no idea where I'm at. I've totally lost it now, and I've lost my navigation. Everything that I was meant to talk about has totally gone off the track, and that's all good. I'm just happy I didn't put you to sleep. <laughs> um, and I think, must be close to me finishing, like the brother said. Um, but thank you again for, for inviting me, Chris. Um, that I was meant to get up here and speak and on behalf as, of Leanza as the president, and I didn't do a very good job of it, but that's all right then, and um, I'm sure that we're going to do a bit more um, later on. I know that I've got to go and sign our partnership agreement, so we have a partnership with um, Te Rōpū Whakahau, um, our bicultural partnership. Um, but, yeah, so I've got to go and sign that, and they says, oh, where can we sign it? I says, let's go and sign it in here, Tohu Exhibition, right by Te Tiriti Awaitangi, and they go, oh, do you think that'll be all right? Well, seeing as CJ, my mate, um, is, is acting president um, while I'm here in Wellington, <laughs> we both went, sweet sis. She goes, yeah, let's do it. So that's where I'm going to be. Um, signing our agreement, even though we actually did sit there when we were talking about governance and talking about how we were going to lead and navigate the future of, of Te Rau Hiringa o Aotearoa, was actually sitting there thinking, do we actually need to be there and do we need a partnership? So I'm past president of Te Rōpū Whakahau, coming in as president only because I thought that no one would apply for it. And I thought, oh, well, we need to have a president, so I'll just put my, put my tunnel in. And then when we had to vote and they voted for me, I was like, oh, damn, I don't know whether I'm ready for this, but I'm here. And I'll just have to keep on moving along and trying to move our, our, um, our organisation into a better collaboration and a better governance structure to actually meet what the future looks like. And I'm 
pretty sure it's not looking pretty for us. Um, and they don't like it when I say things like that because it makes the story really grim. But it is a grim future for many of us, especially in the world of information, um, because we rely a bit too much on technology and forget it's just a tool. And I always laugh at Internet NZ when they go, everyone has access, technology is in. I'm going, yeah, well, when I'm at Waikara, I don't have Wi-Fi. And when I'm up at home around all Māpere, unless my phone's working properly, this is what you do. You text, you look at it, throw it up in the air, catch it, look at it and go, throw it up in the air. And then you come down and go, yes, it got sent. And I tell you what, me as a grandmother, watching the kids do it, it's all right, I'm an adult, I paid for it, that's sweet. But when I watch the kids go, and we're all like, <laughs> and they're going, yep, okay. And then they, and it was like for ages, and we're sitting there going, what the hell are they doing? Then we realised, instead of driving the car up the hill, to, you know, do it and send it, <laughs> this is easier, Whee! Okay, let's do it again, you know, because that's just what you do, and I tell you what, Internet New Zealand, if they could give us Wi-Fi wherever we lived, awesome. And even if they did, because fibre's not working out up there, it's still the old, Eek. I went to the museum, it was, it was a freaking doll. And, and we're all like, you know, hey, you watch that, I can't remember what the movie is. Oh, it's the one with, um, watch his spunk, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds and um, Sandra Bullock, and they're in Alaska, you know, and she's there and it's going, Eek. and it's the doll. And we did that, it was like... Hell okay. Oh my God! It's a doll and it's a modem. Um, but those are the things that we have to try and try and access, and they don't provide us with information for that. You know, they don't they don't actually give us the infrastructure, even though it's available. And it's like, yep, okay, the infrastructure is there. It's like sitting there saying, well, why do I pay rates? Oh, because you know you've got a piece of land and you can hook into the infrastructure if you want to. What if I don't? What if I just want to park my tent up and just sit there and, you know, have a barbecue and that's my kai and just sit on my whenua for a whole week just chilling with no infrastructure whatsoever? Why am I paying rates for? No, no, because then what you're doing is that you're um, updating your whenua, so then you have to pay more rates. <laughs> it's like putting a house on it. You, you upgrade it, and they're like, oh, you've changed your whenua. You've upgraded it. I'll charge you more rates. It's like, uh, no, thank you. But great suggestion. No, te he mihi nunui rawa te kea koutou katoa e kore au ngaro he kākono i rui mai i rangi atea. Mai taua wā ki tēnei wā ka maro tiriti ai tātou te māra o te mā tauranga ka mai a ngā hua um, o tātou i tō tātou ara haka moa. Nō reira, tēnei te mihi ati kea koutou katoa. Kia ora. Waste the time even having this. <laughs>